The best way to learn how to deal with deferred revenue is to simply do an example. On November 1st, X1, Landlord Co. received $18,000 cash from Renter Co. to pay for the following 18-month rental period to end on April 30th, X3. Record all required entries and adjusting entries for 20X1 to 20X3 as per the revenue recognition principle. Per the revenue recognition principle, when should the rent revenue be recognized? I have found that in situations like this, the best thing to do is draw a diagram that helps me to visually see when this landlord is earning the revenue. I first start with the key dates. November 1st is when the landlord received an $18,000 payment that would cover a period extending to April 30th, X3, 18 months later. In this case, it's $18,000 paid for 18 months worth of rent. The monthly rental rate would then have to be $18,000 divided by 18 months or $1,000 per month. If you think about the math then, the first two months would be $2,000 earned in X1. The next year has 12 months for $12,000 and 20X3 has four months for $4,000. That's what should make it into our books. So if we finished 20X1 income statement and it doesn't show $2,000 of rental income from this situation, we did something wrong. In X2, if it doesn't show $12,000 of rental income, we did something wrong. And in X3, if it doesn't show $4,000 of rental income, then we did something wrong. That's when it should be recognized because that's when the landlord earned the revenue. Now that we have the vision of the revenue recognition in our mind, let's do the journal entries. On November 1st, cash is received. So this is a debit to cash increasing the cash account. Now the question is, what should the credit be to balance out this debit to cash? If we earned all the rental revenue in X1, it would be a credit to rental revenue, but we didn't earn it yet, so we have to say we owe the tenant $18,000 worth of rental services. This is called unearned rent revenues, meaning we owe the tenant $18,000. Now as time passes, this liability will decrease and the landlord's revenue will increase. Down below, I've shown the unearned rent revenue ledger account in T-account format. As we post journal entries to the ledger account, we will update the balance. I won't bother updating the cash and the revenues account, just the unearned rent revenue so we can track what's happening in this given situation. By posting our credit to unearned rent revenues to the unearned rent revenue account, the unearned rent revenue account increased by $18,000. We then have to jump to the end of the year and say, okay, have we earned any of this unearned rent revenue? The answer is we have. We've earned two months worth. So we would have to reduce that liability by $2,000 and record rent revenue of $2,000. How much in rental services do we still owe the tenant? Let's post the debit to unearned rent revenues of $2,000, thus arriving at $16,000 of rental services that we still owe our tenant. Let's jump on to the next one. In 20X2, we didn't receive any more payments from the tenant, but we did earn another 12 months worth of rent. So let's record that. We have $12,000 of rent revenue that we've earned, but the tenant didn't pay us in this year, so we can't debit cash, but they did pay us in the past. So we will reduce our liability to them. We've now earned $12,000 of this $16,000 payment. We have now earned $12,000 more of this amount that we receive payment for. If we post that to the ledger account by debiting under rent revenue $12,000, our new balance amount owed to the tenant is $4,000. Jump to the next year. We have to record another adjusting entry to show that we've now earned $4,000 and thus reduce the remaining liability. Let's post that to the ledger account and we show that at the end of this year, we owe nothing more to this tenant and this deferred revenue has now been fully realized and recognized on the income statement. We showed that we were supposed to have $2,000 of rental revenue in 2000X1 and that's what got recorded. 12000 x 2 and that's what got recorded. 4000 x 3 and that's what got recorded. It appears that our journal entries properly updated the rent revenue account to show what we've actually recognized. Do our recognized revenues comply with the revenue recognition principle? Yes, they do.